Hello everyone and welcome back to Take on Mars and in this episode I'm doing post commentary again because I was unsatisfied with the pacing of things and we haven't really gotten to the action yet though by the end of this episode we will be getting into some action uh, so hopefully the next time I'll go back to live commentary because there'll be more things for me to say during the actual gameplay but uh, first things first uh, at the beginning of this uh, playthrough I decided to first check out the tech tree and uh, do some more research since that's that progresses in real time uh, uh, so the one I've got there mobile chassis will take 10 hours so might as well start some things off here but I'm not gonna belabor the tech tree so uh, let's move on and uh, I'm going to just send another probe because I wasn't entirely sure about the landers just yet and I wanted to rack up some more cash before trying out one of the expensive landers, well relatively expensive compared to what we've been doing so far. So uh, probe is pretty easy, we've done these quite a lot before. And so I just fling one at Mars, sort of a nice little trajectory to give us some atmospheric music and eventually it will retrofire come on and retrofire and very good rolling a little bit and so this is our standard little probe probably the most cost-effective thing we do in the game so far uh, but um, it does have one of the environmental analysis stations so that's what we're using can't turn the camera I don't think but uh, anyway there we go uh, environmental analysis and I'm not gonna labor anything I'm going to cut out any slow parts in all of this video so we just jump to temporary results coming soon and I take some pictures now technically my mission is over but I I always like to take pictures but we can't turn the camera so that's basically the only picture I can take back to mission control this is our progress on the global objectives and as you can see we've got a lot of characterizing of the behavior and composition of the Martian atmosphere to do still so I guess send another probe uh, I did want to try something a little bit different but if we've got that much to do uh, just flinging another probe is probably the most time efficient way of doing that so I go ahead and do that there it is again Okay, standard rolling, and this time we get to see it from the probe's camera. Very nice. Eventually we'll get color cameras, I promise. I, I researched that by the end of this, this episode. Well, I start researching it. I queue it up. Now, with that analysis complete, I decide it is time, in fact, to try and send a lander to Mars and see what that's like. So far we haven't done a lander because we were missing the antenna, uh, but I did research the antenna so now we've got that and we're ready to go on the lander. So I decided to aim for Lyot Crater, which I think is the first crater I tried to aim missions at, so sort of familiar with it. The map uh, doesn't look particularly exciting, but you know, once you get there it's uh, much more inviting. I'm never entirely sure what the difference between the locations are. I suppose I should pay attention to what they look like. But anyway, here's the lander. And we've got all sorts of options. Not as many options as I'd like. So it's pretty straightforward. You can see me putting the low gain antenna there. And there aren't, I mean, there's, I guess, two places for everything. And maybe a lot of battery space. Don't even know what cameras I should be putting it just says cameras so I just put whichever and we could I, I 
don't really see whether we're running out of battery power. So far, I, there's been no indication of that, so... Soil analysis probe doesn't show up, and that's because it needs to be placed on one of the arms, the robotic arms. So, um, don't have any of those. Anyway, I keep it to this and decide to launch, and so for the first time we're going to be sending a lander to Mars, rather than a probe. Okay, I'm a little bit worried about the wide error margin on that map and so I was taking a look at that to see because that was the problem we had in the previous episode with the huge error margin and not being able to do the science that we were supposed to be doing. Okay so lander time. You'll notice the little fuel gauge at the bottom right hand corner and that got me interested right away. So the first thing is uh, the heat shield pops off and then we have this little lander separate itself from its shell and right now it's under automatic control so uh, basically auto piloting down uh, but there is a button for manual control there and pretty much constantly through this first uh, first thing I'm thinking about pushing that but I hesitate I want to see what exactly the autopilot does. And this is quite interesting because it doesn't do what I think it's going to do. It has a very weird pattern to it, a sort of odd algorithm in order to get it to the target. There's plenty of fuel. I don't really see any possibility of running out of that. So it makes these arcs, this uh, autopilot, this pre-programmed flight path. In order to try and hit the target, it sort of swings up and down like a pendulum of, of sorts. And I'm exceedingly patient for it because I'm not entirely sure but I think the fact that the location is within a very curved valley is giving it trouble. You'll notice it does get a bit closer here its uh, closest point to the target is about 58 meters and then here it gets to even lower but for some reason here I was getting impatient and decided to try manual control and what I didn't realize was how sensitive the controls were and so I immediately switched back to automatic and tried this again manual but uh, it is just W, A, S and D and well you can see the result I like the achievement in the upper right corner there that's funny but um, I was largely undeterred by this failure. It's just a matter of getting used to the controls. But I realized that uh, I should probably hold off on manual control until I get some more cash. Obviously, I lost the price of this lander. And lots of achievements I get from this. Anyway, um, and just to show how undeterred I am, I, I just go ahead and take some pictures. Why not? While I'm here. At least that still works. A lot of stuff broke off of the lander. I'm trying to figure out what actually works and what doesn't here. But yeah, so uh, on the next try, I decided that I would just let the autopilot handle it. And I'd watch what it does, and I would get practice after getting some cash from that mission. After all, we haven't actually seen whether the lander is capable of doing those pinpoint landings and fulfilling these missions that will net us the uh, more than six hundred thousand dollar rewards right because the little probes can't do these missions I was hoping that the lander could but we haven't tested that theory out yet so here we are Kaiser Crater and this time I will be using autopilot
There goes the heat shield. And eventually our little lander will separate from the shell. There it goes. And right now I'm just crossing my fingers that the automatic control doesn't take too long to get us down. Seems better this time altogether. Last time, uh, right when it separated from the shell, it was really firing those thrusters quite a lot. Right now I'm just wondering where the heck it thinks it's going to land, but then it starts hovering here. So it does a little hover to the location instead of uh, aiming for it from a high altitude. Okay, and it's the green circle that we have to aim for, apparently. Interesting, interesting sort of slope here. And it still does that uh, pendulum swing thing. But this time I watch that altitude as uh, we get uh, closer and closer each time. 30 meters. 20 meters. And finally these tiny little bursts as we get closer and closer to the surface. And there we go. Now here I hit a bit of a snag, and that's because the UI wasn't showing up with the camera and the environmental analysis station. You can hear the thrusters are still firing, and eventually what I figure out, not, not here just yet, but eventually what I figure out is that the game thinks that my joystick is just slightly out of whack, even though it is centered and everything. I guess there was not enough of a null zone on the joystick. So that's why I was still fuss, uh, firing the thrusters and eventually I figured out that a little wiggle of the joystick uh, would recenter it for the game and the game would figure out that uh, it shouldn't be firing those thrusters anymore. And then, then it'll finally settle down. But I don't figure that out just yet and so there's a lot of frustration uh, while the game was still messing around with that. So analysis ends up complete and now I have to take pictures. I'm not entirely sure what that entails here. I do notice right away that uh, that there's no progress on my mission by taking pictures like this. So I switch cameras. Uh, no such luck. So what do I have to do? I switch the infrared on or something like that. No, that doesn't seem to work. Now up till now I haven't been able to turn the camera and that's that's the snag I'm getting hit on. I'm, uh, I'm encountering the fact that I don't realize I can turn the camera just yet. And this isn't working, but eventually Eventually, hopefully, I'll figure this out. Ah, I hear that sound, and this is me clicking the right mouse button and turning, and I hear the mechanical sound of something turning, but I don't see the camera turning. And eventually, my synapses all get in a nice little row. And by eventually, I say, after a very long time. Ah, there we go. Okay, clear that box. And now we can see the camera turning. And here the camera turning. And I see these little green boxes. 
And now we get some completion progress on our mission. So I snap the required pictures. Okay, and that mission is complete. And actually, I just keep snapping pictures anyway, because, well, I'm here, aren't I? If you're gonna go to Mars, you might as well overdo things. But I'll cut out the rest of my exploration for the sake of brevity. Back at Mission Control, I'm now, of course, aiming to take control of the lander myself again. And picking a location, I go with Kaiser Crater. Not that many craters to choose from at this point. Hope that gets expanded. So here we go. Same sort of deal. Patiently waiting for the little lander to be released. And there we go. I let it stabilize for a bit before trying to take manual control, but do it pretty quickly. And then I make sure I get used to the controls here now. I let it go for a little bit and try to take it again. And I'm gradually feeling like I've got the hang of this. So I slowly get closer to the target. Up and down are uh, shift and control, much like in Kerbal Space Program, of course. It's the four back, left, and right that's a little bit touchy with the WAS and G keys. That's very sensitive. Or at least at first, if you aren't uh, used to it. And actually, it rotates the lander. It doesn't. Uh, it's not. Uh, front, back, left, and right, as in RCS as you would normally think it. It's actually a rotation of the lander, similar to what the reaction would produce. Okay, there you can see the rotation of the lander. And I press the back key, the S. Just inching my way towards it. My first manual landing on Mars in Take On Mars, and within 2.5 meters of the target, I don't know if that's enough yet, but I once again have that problem with the UI where it's not it's not showing up. And so I try various things, but this is basically a couple of minutes of me flailing about waiting for the UI to show up so that I can conduct the science. Unfortunately, I don't really wait for it. I eventually get antsy and I start trying to th take things into my own hands. But once you've got a lander on the ground, it's generally not a good idea to try and uh, maneuver it. My logic here, of course, was that maybe the 2.4 or so meters I was away from the target was too much. But, uh,. Yeah, mm, no, I did not succeed in getting anywhere closer to it. 
and I basically wrecked my lander. So, uh, good thing I did that automated mission previously so that I got some cash because I clearly lost uh, money spent on this one. I keep messing around with it for a while. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing with it. Sort of kerbling it, basically. Basically, this has all gotten into kerbal mode, and I'm trying to flip the lander over again. You know, as we do in Kerbal Space Program, this is this is what we do. And I get pretty close, actually. But I don't manage to flip it over. There's no, uh, there's no miraculous reaction wheel or anything like that that can flip a lander like this over and, uh, and take on Mars. Okay, enough of that. Uh, that went on for quite a long time, actually, and it eventually got into emergency mode, which is apparently what happens when some of the fuel is short. As you can see in the fuel level in the corner there, uh, we are in the red line area for the fuel on the first tank there. So that's why we get into emergency mode, I think. I think. It's not uh, explained or anything. But uh, that was the logic of it. And so I decide it's time to uh, quit with that whole experimentation. Knocking the lander around, trying to flip it over. And... Uh, Try once again. Uh, this time, I, I'm i trying to solve the whole problem with the UI popping up and taking too long to pop up. And so I go automate it again. But one thing I decided to change is to add a soil analysis probe on a robotic arm. So this time we have a soil analysis probe. So even though we're going in automated, I can try something new that I haven't tried before. And so uh, that was my aim for this one. If I can change up something, I will on these missions, just to make things interesting. So here we go again, the, the separation and everything. Obviously you start out in this camera, and I actually always switch to the external camera for, for the separation. and. But on the way down, I decide to uh, go with this camera to see what it looks like uh, from the from the lander's point of view, if you will, as we try to reach the surface in automated mode. It's an interesting view, and of course, as we get better cameras and color cameras, it'll be even more interesting to watch this this version of the landing. I think. I think uh, we'll be able to see it in color, hopefully. And the reason I'm not sure is because we don't have all our cameras active right now, so I don't know which cameras are active when. I don't know which camera is actually currently active on this lander. I honestly wonder whether NASA landers are actually programmed for this sort of landing pattern. I'm not sure. Seems like it would be a waste of fuel. But maybe it's just easier to program it that way. After all, they can't take direct control, so it's better to uh, program it with a safer algorithm. I don't know. Okay, well eventually we get to the surface, but the uh, thrusters are still firing because again, joystick problem that I don't realize yet. And I'll skip the time I spend trying to figure that out, and eventually we get the controls, so I capture the gas. So fulfill that part of the mission, and of course the next thing to do is to take photos.
But I'm trying, I put a lot of cameras on this one. I actually splurged on this lander. I put all sorts of cameras and stuff on it. Oddly, you can still hear the thrusters firing. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe my theory about why I can't get the UI to show up uh, earlier is not correct, because clearly something is going on with the thrusters still. Anyway, I get my photographs. I'm not too sure what they're going to glean from these sorts of photos, but whatever they want, they're going to get. In fact, a lot of the times I... I see stuff that they don't want photos for that seem a lot more interesting than what they do want photos for. A lot of little red dots there, I wonder what those are for. Anyway, photography complete. I now turn to attempting to use my soil analysis probe and I don't see an obvious way to click and activate that instrument so I go to the external view to see if I can find it click those things. There is a robotic V-arm there, but uh, I don't see any easy way to control that. And I don't see anything on the external view reacting to it. Finally, I turn to this instrument HUD, and there we go. I can change that to the soil analysis probe. So now I've got the soil analysis probe activated. And, well, basically, nothing good happens. Can't do anything. Which, which is silly, because, you know, there's clearly soil there. And so I should be able to take analysis of it, even if I don't get any money for it. It should just pick it up and analyze, and that'll be that, right? But no, no such luck. So a bit of a disappointment there, we spent uh, a little bit of extra money to add the robotic arm and, and the soil analysis probe, but didn't get any fun out of it. I checked what other technology might help, but uh, I'm not going to belabor that because I really don't know what's going on with the tech tree until the parts pop up in the, in the construction area. So this time again, I try to take manual control and hope that I can conduct the entire mission without flopping around at all. I go with a bare bones lander because, well, if I fail, I'm not going to want to end up spending more money than I have to. So just uh, absolute minimal requirements as I see them. And with that, here we go. There's the heat shield off and waiting for my lander to pop out. Here we go. Let's stabilize and then take manual control. This seems like an easier landing since it's not in the middle of a crater or really rough terrain. So I'm encouraged by that. Still, I haven't quite gotten the dynamics of how to make this landing and what the what to make of the little cross here and everything like that. I'm sure I'll be able to fine tune it as I go along. Minimize the fuel I need, though frankly I don't even even as a beginner, I don't use a substantial amount of fuel. I wonder if there's any way of uh, tweaking the fuel levels so that I don't have to spend as much money on these landers. I don't think we need quite so much for this mission. Though maybe some of the other missions later on might be a little bit more peculiar and require more fuel. I don't know. Seems like this thing carries a lot of fuel, honestly. Again, I, I make no apologies about the choppy approach. I'm still a beginner at this, and so hopefully I will be able to do better in the future. But so far, I think uh, I'm not doing too badly. 
And maybe I can get within the, within a pretty close proximity this time. Interestingly, it seems to stop you from going up. Or at least that's how it seems. Anyway, there we are. 59 centimeters, not bad. I don't know how close you have to be in order to conduct the experiments. Uh, here I'm in. I'm once again trying to figure out how to get the UI. There we go. And now we can do all the experiments we need to do. Just, uh environmental analysis and the usual photographs of course there we go capturing the gas that takes a little eventually I decided that it might be possible to take the photographs while the gas is being captured and so there we go okay a little bit fuzzy over here. But there we get those green boxes that tell us what we need to take pictures of, and so that's uh, that's what we want. It's not as freeform as I would like. I mean really the there isn't as much freedom to decide what you think might be important and discover things from it. They just tell you what's important and don't really let you discover. It's not really an exploration program in a way. It's more of a conducting mission program. You've got this mission and you've got very specific objectives. And you can see, as usual, I, I want to take more pictures. And there's no real no real reason for this impulse but and certainly no benefit to it within the game though I feel there should be now of course uh, in Curl Space Program there are also very well-defined goals when it comes to getting science so I'm not saying that uh, this is something that the game lacks necessarily but I'm just saying it'd be more interesting if it was a little bit more flexible in terms of what I could gather data from and uh, yeah sort of make a real exploration of it so now time for the last launch oh I'm still frustrated by the fact that I can't do anything at the North Polar cap but uh, yep and I wish they'd tell me what I needed to unlock the North Polar cap but uh, no, no such luck there but uh, one more mission this time and uh, that means one more lander I'm not entirely sure about this little mission that I'm shutting down here. Uh, it's in failure of systems there, and I don't know whether whether there was any benefit to keeping it alive or not. But things are getting a bit cluttery in the vehicle list, as you can see. Anyway, so I decided to put together another vehicle, another lander. I don't know why, of course, uh, what we've got has already worked, but uh, just trying things out. Here, going for cheapness again, I think. Yep, even going with a basic battery instead of uh, anything too complicated. And so I decide that that's sufficient to launch with. Lyot Crater again, basically my favorite crater at this point. Okay, here we go to the fall screen. I guess at some point I, I might need to try and land this from the rover camera instead of from the external camera. But I'll need a lot more practice for that. So here we go again. A little bit more of a bumpy terrain here, but I don't think there's anything that would cause this sort of lander to tip over. It's got a very low center of mass, and of course a very wide base to its 
legs, so... In fact, we saw that it's very hard to tip this thing over or flip it around earlier, so... Not too much to worry about that. Still working out what kind of approach would be best, and just doing it very choppy now. The way the controls are, it uh, tends to lend itself to this sort of periodic burst instead of uh, a single continuous burn. Though I suppose if I could estimate the uh, vector right, I would be able to do the continuous burn. No real indication of a uh, retrograde vector after all. I wonder if there are some instruments that are hidden that I'm just not seeing and maybe I could have them displayed somehow. The, the little cross here we've got floating around in front of us right now is our current velocity vector and that's why it keeps going down because gravitational acceleration is pulling it down. I don't know what the blue marker is yet. The green markers seem to be other objects of interest I guess, but I'm still not sure. These are things that are probably going to be covered in some tutorial that they have not made yet. But here we go, closing in within a couple of meters. And there we go. Uh, definitely within range of the spot that we wanted. And now I know how to get the uh, UI up quickly, so that's good. No frustration there. Capturing the gas. And checking out the mission parameters. This is an expensive mission. This is one of those 660k missions. And in retrospect, I think maybe I needed to check out the tasks a little bit more in detail. Because, yeah, on a mission like this, there are tasks that might not be readily apparent. Okay, I go to the camera while it's analyzing. And you can see the little green spot. I try and get the camera to it. Oop, there's the temporary results coming soon. And take a picture. Yes, good. And we're well on our way to completion. And I try and find another spot. I actually take that one just because that looks so interesting that I can't believe that they didn't ask me to take a photo of it. Oh, that looks interesting too, but I pass over that. I'm just trying to find the other spot, and what I probably don't realize is that, now that I'm watching this after the fact, there's probably some other task that I needed to do that I'm not paying attention to. Still very focused on taking pictures. Yeah, that deserves a picture. Yep. But still not finding any other green spot and so not really sure what I have left to do. Okay, tasks. Analyze. Okay. So I have to... I thought I did the analysis already. It came up with the results coming soon kind of thing. But anyway, fair enough. I'll try again. And so this time I decide not to move the instrument or even try and manipulate the cameras. I'll just hold it steady. And here we go. Analysis complete. No mission assigned. We're all done here. And we can disconnect. Lots of little landers and probes on the surface of Mars, just in that crater. That those, that's just the list for 
the ones in that crater, so we're really peppering the place with a lot of junk now. I don't think this is how space programs actually do it, but you know, whatever works. Okay. So, one thing we can't really do is orbital vehicles that take pictures. That would be a little bit more interesting and probably worth saving a few probes for. But anyway, I think this is about time to wrap it up. So, just uh, taking a look at Deimos and the other little objects that we have in the game. And anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We do have the possibility of much more excitement ahead as we try and land more complicated landers and rovers in the game. So I hope you will enjoy watching that as well. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.